Ahoy, shipmates. Welcome to a warm, sunny, and cloudy, all at the same time, evening here in the Port of Southampton. Actually, it looks much better the other way. Over here in Mayflower Park. We are here this evening to watch the departure of the Disney Magic. She's just off to the right hand side of the screen we won't see her just yet and i haven't heard which direction she's departing she's not pointing towards us so i'm guessing she'll probably go over to the far end of the docks turn around and come towards us which means we'll get lots of time with her but she could also reverse and swing at the end of the end of the park we'll have to uh, wait and see how that goes Looks like we have a couple of chaps here breaking the speed limit in port with their speedboats and their jet skis. Speed limit in port is six knots. And for you land lover types, oops, lazy, it's a bit fast. That's five miles per hour, and I can tell you now that's definitely not five miles per hour. These people. I say it does look quite nice to be zipping along on your speedboat. If the harbour master catches you. Captain of the Southampton VTS through the fort, thank you. Can be up to as much as a thousand pound fine. We just generally blew that stuff away from high pier. Well, we'll leave them to it. Jenny Blue VTS, that's all copy, thank you. Break Red Jet 6, Southampton VTS, traffic information. The Eco Universe approaching PC inbound. City of Chichester approaching the dock outbound. Current information is that the Disney Magic is due to leave on time. They were just waiting for a passenger to return from hospital. And there were if memory serves me correctly, something like 2,700 on board. Yeah, 2,457 on board, that's crew and passengers. 
So it should be a fairly good ratio of crew to passengers, which would be nice. The weather is not Caribbean like, but it's still still reasonably decent. There's a bit of bit of a breeze, so you might want to, if you were sitting up on the top deck, maybe take a little cardigan or something with you. She's off on a two-night cruise, as I see our, our excellent spanner Carmen has mentioned. So she'll probably be going off down to Cornwall somewhere, maybe even as far as Lundy or something, around Cornwall, and then back again and back into the port of Southampton. Oh, hoy shipmates, plenty of shipmates in the chat there. Let's have a look who's who we've got in the chat. Let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, people talking about going on the Disney Magic. And somebody paid a lot of money to go on the Disney Magic. I do understand it's quite expensive. I have first-hand knowledge of this. My, we have a couple of uh, I auntie and uncle on board. They will be somewhere towards the front of the ship, so they'll be getting some zoom-in actions. Hopefully they'll be easy to spot. They have informed me they'll be waving flags, so we should look out for them. Hoy there, Colin Large from Leicester. And hoy there, Rosie from London. And William Sherlock says, Shiver my timbers. Oh, hoy there, shipmate. And ahoy there, Toby Petney from Wiltshire. Ahoy there, Andy Carter. And ahoy there, Matthew Wilson from Swindon. And ahoy there, Janet Haunton. Says that she's liking the merchandise. Finally getting going with the merchandise. That's a good point there, shipmate. It's taken a long time, uh, mainly because every time I've tried to do something, with a website it's just gone into error mode and i've had to contact technical support and it's taken it seems like weeks to get anything to happen and then and now it seems to be working so we're slowly filling up with merchandise various different bits of merchandise i'll still we'll do a little video on on that later i've had a, had some mugs come in today as well from uh, one of our excellent subscribers and shipmates apples he supplied us some mugs they look pretty good we have three ships available in the mugs at the moment that will be the p and iona the, oh, I can't think what the other one is. It's cute. Well, the Disney Magic, of course. Piano Iona, and the Queen Mary Two. Thought I'd go with the sort of popular ships at the moment. Oh, hoy there, Sinead Milton from Hyde. Oh, she's a very local, but uh, she'll be just over there in the sort of right-hand side of your picture. So she's a very very local indeed. Oh, the hoy there, Sue Hyde. She says, my daughter works on Disney Magic. Oh, excellent. I, I suppose if you asked her, maybe she'd come out and give you a wave. But perhaps she's probably dealing with, dealing with the passengers. It's not a full, not a full passenger roster this time. Disney Magic has capacity for somewhere in the region of 2,700 passengers, yet we've only got 2,500 crew and passengers and a maximum capacity of 945 crew. So she's probably somewhere in the region of, oh, well, probably sort of like near 2,000 passengers, so slightly reduced. But nonetheless, I'd imagine it's still a good trip. The weather's looking, I'll say it's not Caribbean style weather, but it's looking warm. It's not going to be raining, so that's a that's a plus side indeed, isn't it? Okay, where are we? Oh, with their Pinter Productions. Uh, Oh, hoy there, Michael Ladbrook from Itswich. Oh, and ahoy there, Mark Wheatman. Welcome aboard, a new subscribing shipmate. Always a pleasure to have more shipmates on board. Lost anything to subscribe and does help the channel out all, all the watch. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, 
Oh, there, John Dring oh, says, oh, is there any passengers on board? Yes, there is. Oh, passengers on board. I don't think it's quite a full complement of passengers. But there are passengers on board. So I was guessing somewhere in the region 2,000. It's 2,700 in total. We don't know what the breakdown is. So I'm guessing it's about 2,000 passengers-ish. And what else do we have here? Oh, hoy there, Toby Petany. It says he's currently in isolation after testing positive for COVID. Oh, dear shipmen. I hope you get well soon. And that certainly sounds like the sensible thing to be being able to put yourself in isolation. So nothing yet from Disney Magic. Maybe they're still waiting for that personal hospital. Here's the ferry terminal. As you can see the sky is quite pretty this evening. It's been a very busy day at the ferry terminal. I think we probably... Now that we're sort of middle of August, it's probably peak holiday time for the Isle of Wight. It's that time of year where if there were any more people on the Isle of Wight, it might sink a few more inches into the Solent. But it's been very busy. And what we've got over here, the sky is looking a little darker over that direction. Not too bad. And then surprisingly, on that cruise cam here, we have no cruise ship in the... Ocean Terminal. It's very unusual. Normally there's a cruise ship there. I'm guessing we'll probably have one in tomorrow. In the meantime, we'll wait here in the sunny Mayflower Park. Or... Yes, Disney Magic. As if by magic. Disney Magic, Southampton VTS. Good afternoon to you. Commencing the single up. We'll be breaking away very shortly. Disney Magic, Southampton VTS, that's all copied. Could you break up the numbers for me, crew and passengers from the 2457, please? I'm going to go with 1,800 passengers. Let's see what he says. Yeah, VTS, Disney Magic. Disney Magic BTS. Crew 911. Guests 1546. Oh, I was out by 300. Oh, it's almost a full complement to crew. Disney Magic BTS. That's all copied. 911 crew 1546. Passengers. Thank you. And one pilot. Disney Magic BTS. Yes, got the pilot. So, yes, yeah, so that's almost a full complement of crew, but only 1,500 passengers. So, yeah, it should be, shouldn't be as many people queuing at the buffet when you get on. So, that be something to look forward to. So, that answers the questions about passengers. Well, she's just singling up, uh, according to the pilot, so... If what that means is they normally have a whole number of lines keeping the ship attached to the dock. I couldn't tell you how many in total, but at a guess, I'd imagine somewhere in the region of about 20, two dozen. And they'll slowly take all those lines in and just leave two or three attached. That's basically a single one at the end, and a single one at the other end, and a single one in the middle. And that means once they've got everything going, it just holds the ship there and off they'll sail. So I imagine we'll probably see some movement in you know, the uh, next five or ten minutes. Carmen, good evening. Carmen, Southampton, good evening. Good evening to you. Good to go uh, a little bit before 7 to VTS, that's all copied, 9 decimal 2, 20 POB outbound. Traffic information, leave Disney Magic on 102 berth, should be breaking away and following you out. Okay, radio, right I'm just trying to work out, oh, there we go. Okay, so the ship that's just about to leave is this one here, this lovely bright turquoisey ship the Walhallianist Walhallamson called Carmen 
that. I've just realised the irony in that name. This is one of the local... I say local. That's uh, great. One of the frequent visitors to the Port of Southampton is a Roro. So she's a vehicle transporter. And you can see her in the car park just in front of the ship. There's all the cars that may transport. It's not just cars. All sorts of wheeled vehicles. Predominantly cars, but there are also lorries, trucks, agricultural equipment, JCBs. <laughs> All that sort of thing will go onto the Roros and they will be delivered around to Europe. So we export quite a lot of cars in this country. Range Rovers, they're very popular. Uh, Minis, or Hondas, well used to be, but I think that might be stopping soon. But that's Carmen, so she'll be leaving shortly. So you can see my amusement with the name of a car transporter vehicle being called Carmen. There we go. And we're still waiting for Disney magic. Oops, that camera's moving fast. And that's the city of Chichester Dredger there in the background making way down. It's a good view this evening to the Isle of Wight, so that's handy. We'll be able to keep on top of the Disney magic for quite some time. And you can see the rolling hills of the Isle of Wight. Not full of people just yet, but that's not for one the red funnel. For want of trying to fill it up with tourists. Good evening, just leave 37. Remember the Carmen signing? BTS, all copy, thank you. I've got to turn the radio off now because we know what's happening, we know who's leaving. Let's go back and check over here. And oh, away there's Sue Hawkins from Kent. And oh, away there's Stephen Jones. And also says oh, always the Blue Spanner crew. Blue Spanner crew are our admins in the chat, not only for the live streams, but also for the live streaming cameras that we have. Make sure that there's no discontent between shipmates Ahoy there bus lover and Ahoy there G-Boats who says he was on Disney Magic in the Mediterranean for a week uh, we're back on board in two weeks I have a feeling though uh, you won't be back on board in the Mediterranean unless there's another one in the Mediterranean Ahoy there Leslie Donaldson that's any news on the new camera I'm waiting for electrical work at two locations and I'm waiting for internet installation at a third location. It's, uh, it's just a bit slow I, because it's a, people are just helping me out and it's sort of a voluntary thing. No, one, no one's in a necessary in a rush to, uh, to complete the work, if that makes sense. But, you know, it's it's all going well. So we will have some more cameras shortly. I would say if you do have a property, or you know of somebody who would like a camera on their property to has a good view of the water from somewhere on in the Isle of Wight or Southampton Water or Burrow Field with a view of ships, just let me know. And I'm more than happy to investigate installing a camera. I don't need ideas of where to go because... I've got lots of ideas. I just need people with that have actually got a property that wouldn't mind me screwing onto. Businesses seem to be the best thing because I can, at the same time, I can reciprocate their generosity with advertising their business. So we shall carry on working on that. Uh, ahoy there, Mark Waite, from your fans in Cardiff Bay. Oh, yaki da. And ahoy there. Pookity Cat, who says she's got a cardigan on. Well, I wouldn't say it's that cold, but yes, there is a bit of a breeze on. A quick look here. This is the Reg Jet from the Isle of Wight. It's just jetting in. She'll get you to the Isle of Wight in around 20 minutes, unlike the Red Funnel Ferry, which will take somewhere in the region of an hour, assuming there's no 
breakdowns or hold-ups. So we're still waiting for Disney Magic. Let's have a quick look on the map, see if there's any movement. Nothing as of yet. But uh, she has singled up, so she should be on the move shortly. Oh, ahoy there, Sue. Hide from Hull. And ahoy there, Sonia, from the Wirral. Says it's a lovely evening to sail. Yeah, I'd say so. We have had some very disturbed weather here in the Port of Southampton, so I think you're, if you were going out this evening, you'd be very happy with yourself. And oh, there we go. We could just about see her now. See the stern coming out. Right hand side of the screen there. It always, it always is, just amazes me how how fast these ships move sideways. You, you just wouldn't think it was possible. I mean, I understand going forwards, but sideways, the, and how fast they can spin sometimes, it's quite amazing. As seems to be usual with the Disney magic. I, I said it before, this Disney magic is the only one where I've seen this happen. She actually generates quite a crowd of people that like to see her depart. And you can see them there, down in Mayflower Park. Excellent location for a bit of ship spotting there. And it looks to me like she's going to be sterning towards us. And then be swinging right in front of Mayflower Park. So that's that's not a bad thing. We'll get some great views. And the sun is starting to pick up a bit of colour. It's getting near setting. It's turning into a rather attractive evening. Oh, there, G-Boats. This is what time is the Disney Magic departing? A few minutes ago. Due to depart at 6.15, so she's running about 15 minutes late. Ahoy there, buses, journeys, and more. Have you worked on TV? You have that very good voiceover style of voice. All the best. Wayne. Well, thank you there, shipmates. I, in fact, I have done a, a little bit on radio, and I have done a little bit on television as well, but only in a very small, sort of amateurish capacity. Although recently, the uh, we've had a few videos from the channel appear on local news we caught some we caught some fireworks not fireworks sorry we caught some uh, excellent footage of lightning a couple of times so we've appeared on the local news for that really entertaining also caught the demolition of the Forley power station the generation hall it's on local television as well That's quite fun here. I can see someone flying a kite down Mayflower Park. Perfect kite flying weather. I've noticed this is a, a worrying trend on cruise ships here in the Port of Southampton. They have increasingly large screens up on the upper decks. And they totally fail to be show, showing the Solent ship's live streams. It's a bit of a shame. But never mind, perhaps we'll be able to fix this at a later time. Also notice they've been doing a last bit of maintenance work on the stern of the vessel as well. Looks like they've been touching up the paintwork. That's nice of the Disney characters to help with the maintenance on board. Always a continuing problem with cruise ships. A lot of maintenance required. Sea air is very corrosive. Oh, and there's that kite. Ahoy there, Jordan Ekstrom from 
Krellborg, Sweden. Great to have you on board, shipmate. I think we've had a few people from Sweden before. That's unusual, but it's beginning to see more of them. Which is the Starlings as well recently. Um, a few murmurations around. I've not seen quite so many as I would have thought, as I've seen in previous years, but maybe it's because I'm just looking more. A couple of features I noticed that are relatively unique to the Disney Magic. Uh, we couldn't see it at the time because uh, she was out of camera shot. But she has yellow ropes that secure to the ground, uh, to the dock. Uh, she has this lovely yellow pin striping down the side. And against uh, maritime, I'm not sure, tradition or rules or regulations, she applied for special permission to have yellow lifeboats as well. And you can see there along the side here. A slightly different coloration. I quite like the yellow touch. Looks slightly more attractive, perhaps, than the orange. But the yellow ropes, I thought, were particularly, particularly interesting and showed such attention to detail. I haven't been on board, but I, we have some uh, my auntie and uncle on board today, so we'll try and find them later. They're going to be on the port side after she spins around. And they'll be waving once we get to somewhere near the very terminal. It's a great location. If you are on board and you want to wave, um, depending on where the position of the ship is, I normally can see you the best just as you come past the ferry terminal. That's closest to the camera and you get the best view. Some more naughty jet skis there, breaking that speed limit. Of course, the uh, Disney Magic won't be breaking the speed limit. She'll stick rigorously to that six knots limit. This might not be the Caribbean or the Mediterranean, but you, you do get the lovely view of silhouetted cranes in the containment terminal there. And of course, how often do you go sailing around the coast of the UK? Not very often. I think this is one of the benefits of these lockdown staycation sails, cruises rather. Looks to me like the Disney Magic is going to swing clockwise today, which is the preferred direction of the pilot. That chap with the kite has certainly got some height on that. A big TV up there on, on the funnel, is, I think it's called Funnel Vision, and shows a constant stream of cartoons and Disney classics. Top tip here from uh, Auntie and Uncle, Uncle Mike and Auntie Anne. They were, sir, they were busy to hit the pool. They got on board around about two o'clock. Uh, and they said, if you want to go and hit the pools, best time to do it is when you get on, because not everyone goes to the pool. But the trouble is, because you've put your swimmers in your luggage... You can't go swimming. It takes a while before your cases are delivered to your cabin. So top tip from Auntie Anne is make sure you've got your swimmers in your hand luggage and, of course, your sunscreen. And you can go swimming while everyone else is busy. Be a few wavers on the front there. Probably waving to the people on the land. People down in the Mayflower Park. Yeah, probably down to these folk down here, probably waving goodbye to their friends and family. Of course, if you don't have the opportunity to come into port to wave off friends and family, the next best thing is the Sodent Ships YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe. And if you do subscribe and hit that notification bell, you will be updated whenever I go live with a live stream. Times can vary. Ships aren't terribly accurate in their comings and goings. And sometimes I spontaneously broadcast without a plan. A 
Looks like a little look here of the wing bridge. It looks like a number of officers out on the wing bridge there, making sure the water is clear for this for the uh, spin. Only trouble with this time of year is the sun is at the other side, so we tend to get a bit of a bit of a silhouette here on the ships, but it can be quite attractive. I think you get a really good view here of the bow of the Disney Magic. Very, very slender bow and very raked stern. Like I say, compared to most of the cruise ships, I think she does have quite a bit of elegance about her design. It leads me to think somewhat in sort of similarity to the Queen Mary 2. I think possibly the blue hull makes me think that as well. Should be a little Disney flag flying at the front there. And there's a, there is a, you can't see it from this angle, but just uh, be, behind that flag is a couple of Disney patterns. Looks like a, looks like a drone landing pad. I'll have to have words with the captain one day and see if I can land there. Caught a bit of hornage there. Playing the Disney theme tune. Wish upon a star. She might play it again. Leave the other camera microphone on just in case. Some ships like to hoot a lot, some just do the war, and some do none hooting. Oh, oh there, shipmate, James Flaxman. Welcome aboard, shipmate. He's also keen to be kept in the loot and notified when new broadcasts occur. Probably the end of the hooting, unfortunately. And it's turning into a lovely evening. Oh, hoy there, Tom Elkins from Wolston in Southampton. He'll, he's very close by. He'll have maybe even maybe be able to see the Disney magic as she goes past. Hoy there, Ali Clark from Aylesbury. And hoy there, Mark Wheatman, who's departing on Disney Magic on Wednesday and cannot wait. Reading through the chat comments. Oh, well, there, Dave BW from Ontario, Canada. And oh, well, there, Adam from Harefield, Southampton. I am surprised about the number of local people we get watching the channel. And just imagine how many people around the rest of the world might be interested. Or perhaps they're not interested. Perhaps it's just the locals.
Oh, there, Mark. He thinks he's an ocean liner. It's, and has the horn gone yet? Yes, the horn has gone. Is she an ocean liner? I don't want to get into the ocean liner cruise ship debate. It's, uh, it's a little pedantic for my liking. I think the general consensus opinion is that the Queen Mary 2 is the only ocean liner and everyone else is a cruise ship. I think speed is a big deciding factor in this debate as well as um, ocean going ability the Disney speed Disney magic has a top speed of 23.5 knots or 43.5 kilometers now for you continental types 27 miles per hour in English so it's faster than your average cruise ship but nowhere near as fast as the Queen Mary 2 Just going to put on an auntie and uncle camera and see if we can see auntie and uncle. Oh, yep, I've got the They're all there, all waving away. There's all of those relatives back in South Wales, in and around the Cardiff area. You can be rest assured. Auntie Anne, Uncle Mike, and the two grandchildren are happily aboard, waving flags. There we go. Oh, hoi there, McCat lady many thanks for your kind donation that'll help with the installation of new cameras more equipment producing excellent content for the channel hopefully and more widely variety of content as well lovely bit of synchronized waving there well done uncle mike and auntie anne Ahoy there, Randy Schwartz. And ahoy there, Anthony Mellonship. Oh, welcome aboard, shipmates. Thank you for subscribing and becoming one of our crew. A question, either, or a statement, rather, from uh, Randy Schwartz. It says, not sure if you wear Disney Magic uses a special paint on their ships, the black... It's even a special colour developed just for Disney. That's how I was aware. This was the, uh, I think it was the secretary or something that came into the meeting and they decided the colour of a suit was perfect. The colour of the hull. I think it's not actually blue, uh, not black. I think it's actually a dark navy, if I remember correctly, but I'm happy to stand corrected. Ahoy there, Miles Hassel. When is the next cruise ship due in? I imagine tomorrow morning, around about six o'clock, I would say. Just, uh, just as the cruise ship's going, we have the red funnel arriving. If you happened to be on the red funnel, red falcon, on this evening, you'd at, you'd get one of the best views possible of a cruise ship. Difficult to coordinate, but if you can manage it, it would be one of the best views on the water. Get an excellent view here of the stern. See how it's got that rake design and the bit of a duck tail to the stern? That's supposed to aid in fluid dynamics and help reduce fuel consumption. Ahoy there, Mihail Blavik. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Glad you could join the crew. There we go, you can really see that stern there. Very un very unusual. I've not seen a stern with, that protrudes quite so much. Oh, 
Oh, hoy there, shipmate. Stephen B. Stephen B. Welcome aboard, shipmate. Pleasure to have you part of the crew. If you've hit that notification bell next time there's a live stream, you'll try. <coughs> oh, hoy there, Dave B. W. May thanks for your kind donation. Five Canadian dollars. Unfortunately, I think it gets converted, but, but it'd be really nice if I had a five Canadian dollar note. It'd certainly make a change, wouldn't it? So just passing the town key, just starting away towards the Arctic Ocean Terminal, and then you should be heading down to Southampton Water. I think you'd be quite happy with yourself if you were on board this evening with a rum-based cocktail sat towards the rear. I was also informed that the, you were allowed, allowed, had an allowance of two bottles of wine to bring on board. And a, and a bottle of champagne, or a bottle of champagne, I'm not sure. But you certainly could bring on two bottles, so that's, that's a slightly different to some of the other ships. Oh, there, Vanessa Wells says there is no picture on here, only the one you're waiting for. Sounds okay. Oh, I'm afraid I cannot help you there. One of the many little niggles of YouTube... Oh, as one of our spans has correctly said, hit refresh. Yes, that's that seems to solve all problems. Along with turn it turn it off and then turn it back on. That also seems to solve a lot of problems. I don't know there, fog marsh mark. Welcome aboard, shipmate. Uh, well, there Daniel Sand says, wouldn't it be funny if VTS is watching your feeds? Uh, from the information I've received, uh, yes, they do watch the feeds. They find it very useful. VTS is the radio that you can hear when I have it on at the beginning of the stream and towards the end. VTS is sort of like the they're called vessel traffic services. That's sort of like the air traffic control of the water. I don't know if it was clear earlier, but in fact, Goofy is actually a three-dimensional object on the back. Sorry, he's not a three-dimensional. He's a dog, of course. Uh, he's actually three-dimensional. He's not just a painting. I'll, I'll see if I can zoom in a second. Let's, uh, let's go to this one. I'll see if I can zoom in on Goofy. Just zooming in on the other camera. There we go. You can see he's actually quite large. I think if you were to meet him in real life, strolling around the deck that size, it could be quite alarming. Oh, ahoy there, Gat Pack Bob from Cleveland, Ohio, in the USA. This is where it gets a little bit tricky down this end of the port. A lot of commercial vehicles. That's one of the things I enjoy. Oops, wrong camera. That's one of the things I enjoy about the Port of Southampton is the variety of vessels we have here: commercial vessels, cruise ships, ferries, pleasure craft. Yachts, power boats, 
even get super yachts in here in port as well. It's always something to look at, always something changing. I think that's why the streaming cameras are so popular. Just the variety of traffic in port. The weather conditions equally vary massively. We can start off with the day being foggy and it goes sunny and lots of rain. And you can see the rain coming in as well for some distance. So it's really great to have such a variety going on. During lockdown, a lot of people have had the streaming cameras on their computers, on their second screen, while they've been busy working it from home. Breaks up the monotony of the day. Of course, I wholeheartedly approve of this. Disney Magic's just about reaching Pier Head now. Uh, sorry, the Dock Head. She reached the Dock Head. Just past the Queen Elizabeth II tunnel, she'll pick up a bit of speed, slip away down Southampton Water. You can see the other, the Red Jet. The Red Jet has special permission to speed here in the Port of Southampton. That little, little tiny ship you can see off the right, a little tiny boat, is the Harbour Patrol. So maybe he's been out looking for those jet skiers. But yes, you'll. The Disney Magic will pick up speed from about here. She'll open up the engines, probably get to around 12 knots, and then slowly proceed down Southampton Water. If you happen to be on board, you'd get a view of the new forest and the Pauly Refinery on your right. Oh, hoy there, shipmate Dennis Reed. Welcome aboard. Pleasure to have you as part of the crew. And then on your left-hand side, you'd get the Queen Victoria Country Park. And then when you got to the end of Southampton Water, you'd go around Cowshot Spit, where you can see Cowshot Castle, around the Isle of Wight, and then off into the English Channel and down to the Cornwall. These are some grain stalls here at the end of the port, at the dock head. Rather inconveniently obscuring our view. But we'll see her go past. I shall continue to follow as she makes her way down. Oh, and it looks like the Roro Carmen is actually going to follow Disney Magic out. They've changed order. It might look like they're heading for a collision course, but uh, it's, there's, much, there's much more gap there than you imagine. Suddenly looking quite busy here at uh, the dockhead. I'm thinking the uh, Carmen Roro carrier must be a fairly new vessel. Got a really sharp paint job. Oh, there, Matthias Bremer from Holland. Oh, there's Steve Arnold. Questions about where the ships turn around. Uh, the answer to those questions are, I don't know. I really want to find out. They've turned around in various different locations, and I don't know the, the reason for it. There must be some logic, but I don't know. I shall, um, um, I shall ask a pilot one day what the reasoning is. Perhaps he can tell me. Ahoy there, Linda West. No, I'm sorry. I think Linda West is watching with her daughter, Evie. Oh. Ahoy there, Evie. Welcome aboard, shipmate. And 
you can see Carmen's got the big text on her stern there. Very easy to identify. Ahoy there, Mo Hatchets. Your friend Steve is with his family on Dizzy Magic. I'm sure they'll be having a splendid time. Our visibility is absolutely superb this evening. In fact, I've just spotted it. This, this tall uh, chimney here is the Fawley Power chimney. And that is due to be demolished later this year. It should be quite exciting, I have to say. I'm hoping to drone it but they're quite keen to keep the demolition data secret. But in the meantime, if you do happen to be here in the Port Southampton and you're looking for a day trip, I can recommend taking the Red, Fun Red Funnel Ferry or the Red Jet over to the Isle of Wight, over to Cowes, and a short distance from Cowes is Queen Victoria's holiday residence, Osborne House. Now, visibility is so good today. If we just wait a second, I'm sure I saw it. We can actually see Osborne House from here just the top of it have a little zoom in there we go that is the top of osborne house and you can make this very distinctive uh, italian style building if you do get the opportunity to go to osborne house i highly recommend it the indian room is amazing the whole the whole the whole place is amazing it's really interesting to see where queen victoria used to like to spend her time with her grandchildren of which I seem to remember she had somewhere in the region of when she was alive 97 grandchildren I think I'm somewhere in that region don't quote me on that but that's a good sign of good visibility Oh, there, Mecky Do, Mecky Dro. I think she must have had a recent paint job. Yeah, uh ha, -huh. I think we're talking about Carmen. I reckon you're probably right. Sometimes the Roro carriers or the, you know, the goods vehicles of the seas, they can look quite tired, but Carmen was looking really sharp, wasn't she? Uh, no, no problem there, Linda West. Glad, uh, glad Evie enjoyed the shout out. And perhaps, uh, perhaps you can go on a cruise ship one day, Evie. Perhaps, uh, perhaps Linda will take you in one of the Disney ones. Oh, there, Catherine Harwood. Just saw your friend Judy waving. Excellent. It's quite difficult to fit in all the wavers. I do try. So apologies if you don't get shown. Only so much I can sort of do. We've got another jet skier zooming around the ship. They like to follow big ships and jump over their wakes. Of course, they've got to have the occasional crane that's in the way. Slightly annoying. Oh, there, Lord Geoffrey Harrison. Can you recommend the best way to go to the Isle of Wight? What company should I go with? It sort of depends on where you want to go and what you want to do. If you're just going by foot or by car, or if you're going um, just for a day or for a longer period of time, Southampton probably is your best bet. The the Red Funnel is very enjoyable. If you in take, if you think of it as like a, a mini cruise, you can, and the weather's decent, you can be outside on the deck and enjoy the scenery and all the boats as you go past. So that's very enjoyable. The Limington to Yarmouth ferry is shorter, and it can be a bit more difficult to get down to Yarmouth. Oh, sorry, Limington, depending on where you're travelling from. Uh, the ferries from Portsmouth again, depending on where you're travelling from, could be a little more difficult to get to. If you're just going as a foot passenger, then the red jet is 20 minutes, and that's that gets you there. Not particularly exciting, if that makes any sense. You sort of inside a, a boat that's going quite fast. If you want excitement, my recommendation would be the hovercraft from Portsmouth to ride. 
and that's one of the only hovercraft service passengers in the world as far as I'm aware so that if you're after a death fun day out take that uh, um, and I don't know I was just about to recommend that once you're in ride you can take up a, a London tube train down the coast but I'm not sure that's in service at the moment because they were doing some work but if you do uh, you can take the tube train down to Sandown and if you walk down through Sandown not too far we're only talking about oh, a mile here and half a mile there and there's a lovely pub at the end of the beach and that makes a lovely day trip so a uh, rather complicated answer to your question there well, hopefully that'll help Ahoy there, Luke. Chaps UK is asking, are there any nice curry houses? Well, I can answer that question very, very easily. Just here, the building that looks you know, quite different here. That's Kuti's Brasserie. That is an, a fine Indian restaurant. He has won many awards. He opened probably about four or five years ago maybe a little bit longer than that uh, but the last uh, two or three years probably not during lockdown he's won best Indian restaurant uh, for the last two or three years very different uh, various different awards so if you do fancy Indian I can wholeheartedly recommend Cootie's Brasserie it's also next to the water so if you're lucky you can get to see a cruise ship while you're eating your curry Let's say fairer than that can we Ahoy there, Tom Gardner, who's watching live on the Admiral Blake trawler. That's the Admiral Blake, Admiral Blake trawler. Admiral Blake. Just checking the map to see where. Ah, oh, somebody said they're on a trawler. I've lost it. Uh, Tom, Tom Gardner. So where's Tom Gardner? He is. Oh, he's way off the coast of Cornwall, near the Isle of Scilly. My word, shipmate! How on earth do you get signal out there? That's amazing. Can't imagine you getting. Actually, yes. How did you get signal now? Please, uh, please tell me. It can't be. Uh, can't be three G or four G. Surely, must be something else. Very impressive. That's dedication. Well done, shipmate. I think that's my. Well, yeah, I've not had anyone watching it from the middle of a, the middle of a channel somewhere. Well done. Thanks for that, shipmate. Very impressive. Disney Magic just going past the SO refinery here. I think visibility is excellent this evening. How about that, eh? So the Admiral Blake is a fishing trawler. Currently travelling at four knots. That looks to be, I would say, somewhere in the region of a hundred miles from Land's End. So that's quite impressive. Oh, there, Kim Colby. Says she had a good few days in Southampton and was ashamed to come back home. One day more, and she would have seen Disney. Yeah, that's always a shame. If you if you are in the port of Southampton and you do want to have a have a go, a bit of ship spotting or watch them go past, there's an excellent website called the BTS website vessel traffic services and they list all the shipping movements dave massey has a question what's the difference between a ship and a boat 
That's a complicated semantic one here. I personally say if it's a boat, I can drive it. It's a ship, then I probably can't drive it. But essentially, people like to say you can put a boat on a ship, but you can't put a ship on a boat. And also, boats go into water. Now we're getting into submarine territory, which there is an excellent submarine museum in the port of, port of Portsmouth. So what's asking is how tall is Disney Magic? I would imagine somewhere in the region of oh, about 60, 60, 70 metres. All right, shipmates, I shall draw this to a conclusion. I shall carry on following the Disney magic, but I'm going to go and hit the galley at that time of the evening. Hope you've all enjoyed this broadcast. I'm not sure which one's going to come next. We're, we've are we been a little bit busy last week and this week uh, undertaking some filming for a new series we've got coming out. All about the ships in the Solent area. So trying to broaden our content. In fact, answering some of the questions we've had in the chat today. So if you have enjoyed the live stream, I do think about subscribing and hitting the uh, thumbs and the notification bell. The next time we go live or a new video comes out, you'll be notified. Thanks to all the PayPal donors, Patreons, and donors join the chat as well. All your all your donations help to buy new equipment and cameras. And of course, thanks to the Blue Spanner crew for doing such a fine job of looking after the chat. Now, until next time, shipmates.